Hello you beautiful audience. This is Reddit Stories. And today's topic is. Time for some positive lies. What's something you don't like to let on that you're incredibly proud of? I have Crohn's disease, and have had it since 1983. Every day, I have pain, go to the bathroom at least a dozen times, have had three bowel resections, and have been on some awful drugs. Most of the people I know, never know I don't feel well. If asked, I say, I have felt worse. Let's have some fun. I don't want to be shackled by my disease, and I don't want anyone else to be either. Every month I take $100 out of the ATM and put it in an envelope. By December I have 1100 bucks. There are a couple teachers and staff I know at the local elementary school, and they let me know a couple kids slash families that they know won't be having much of a Christmas because they can't afford it. I then give the money I save to the families so that they can buy their kids presents and enough food for a good Christmas holiday and family dinner. It doesn't seem like much, but five or six hundred bucks to a family that has next to nothing can really make a Christmas memorable. This is far and away the best part of my year every year, and I really look forward to it. I have never told anyone that I do this, not even my wife. This isn't every day, but I do it often. When I'm out and about, getting groceries or whatever, if I notice an older lady who obviously tried with her outfit, hair, and makeup, I'll make a point to tell her she looks very lovely today. Regardless of if I like her hair, makeup, outfit, etc. I simply pay her a compliment because the look on their faces after is just priceless. You can see a noticeable difference simply in the way they carry themselves after hearing this, and they are always smiling from ear to ear. I'm one of those people with a freakish memory, in particular when it comes to spatial awareness and numbers. I don't really know what it's like to lose your keys, but for a few drunken times, because I've never forgotten where I put them. I remember phone numbers, ones I shouldn't. Like, the phone number to the guy who sold me my car eight years ago. Or the leasing office to my first apartment. And my second apartment, and my third, and the cell number of my loan officer, oh, the list goes on and on. Credit card numbers, prescription numbers, counts, zip codes, prices, all of it. I don't like to let on this one at all, though, my wife is the only person who really knows the extent of it. Every time I've let something slip, like, telling someone who misplaced an important document that I know they set it down on a table on the other side of the building because I saw it there two days ago, they look at me like I'm some sort of savant. Back to my loan officer, when he needed numbers to those leasing offices, that's why I used that example, really, and I rattled them off, well he said it was the first time that's ever happened. So I don't let on at all. But really, it makes me feel like some sort of superhero. Edit, you people ask the same questions over and over again. Here. I am a software developer. I went to Vegas, and did the card counting thing. Didn't work out too well as my thought train can't keep up with my memory, and apparently you need to have strategy to go along with counting backslash. I'd like to study that sort of thing, along with counting strategies that actually work, and give it another whirl someday, but I don't have dreams of making my first million that way. Yes, I am Mike Ross. The price is right is a life goal of mine. So is Jeopardy. I did very well in school, but a stellar memory is only part of the puzzle. It doesn't mean I didn't have to study, since memory and understanding are not the same thing. I studied as much as anyone. I don't have OCD or autism, but I have been diagnosed with OCPD. My husband went through 13 years of chemo and radiation, monthly spinal taps with no anesthesia, and was bullied unmercifully by children and parents for being the cancer kid. He doesn't consider himself a cancer victim or survivor, he was just a kid who had cancer. 
he never mentions being weeks from dying or the pain and has made it his life goal to repay the doctors who saved him by making others' lives better. I'm incredibly proud of him. I worked for NASA. I've always felt a little embarrassed because of how people act when they find out. I also try to generate random acts of kindness by paying for people's stuff at drive through windows, toll booths, etc. I once paid for a family's layaway at Kmart around Christmas when it was about to be cancelled because of non-payment. This morning, my two sons, six and seven, got up and made breakfast for the family, frozen waffles. It was really sweet and they were so proud. One of them even went and got a throw pillow off of the couch to put on my husband's chair because he had pulled a muscle in his back and they knew it was bothering him. I am incredibly proud that we've managed to raise nice people. According to my last job review, I'm one of the most productive, and arguably the most productive, members of my org. Yet I spend a good bit of time on Reddit slash Facebook during the day instead of work. Sometimes, I wonder just how much work I could get done if I could focus the whole day. My wife and I gave up our 20s to raise my niece, because her piece of shit parents wouldn't. While everyone around us was going out every weekend, and planning island vacations, we were saving money for school clothes and kitty theme parks. In addition, I stayed at home to raise her for four years, which made it really, really difficult to find a job, I'm still underemployed. I was molested and nearly beaten to death when I was a child, but I've grown up to not be a serial killer, rapist, murderer, drug addict, or child molester. I am a proud father, homeowner, and successful entrepreneur, employing others and making positive contributions to society. It took nearly 15 years of therapy, and most of the therapists I know are shocked that I'm okay after what I've lived through. I did go through some suicidal periods many years ago, but ultimately I decided that having a sense of humor and being happy, and a positive person, to boot, is the greatest middle finger I could extend to those who've done me harm. There are a few things I thought about listing, managing severe depressive disorder, doing a master's degree, but the thing I'm most proud of, and that I hardly ever tell anyone, is that I write questions for a TV quiz. It's not my main job, and I haven't been doing it long, but it's more or less my dream job, and seeing my name in the credits the first time was indescribable. I was in a relationship with an extremely controlling, physically abusive man when I was 17 to 20, I got pregnant at 17 and moved in with him out of a lack of other real options at the time. I had our baby and was stuck depending on him financially, but I knew the whole time my baby deserved much better and I couldn't stay with a monster. So I managed to get a 4.0 my first semester at community college even though I pretty much had to do my homework in secret, boyfriend would trash it, threw my laptop into the street, etc. I was a full-time student and also working a part-time job, all the hours boyfriend would allow, and taking care of our child with absolutely zero help from him all while tolerating nearly nightly assaults. I saved up my money, saved all of his money I could without him noticing, a little bit of change each time he sent me to the grocery store, etc. And at the age of 20, snuck my child out in the middle of the night and ran. I am finishing up my degree this year. To this day, nobody knows what I put up with, and I figure it doesn't much matter anymore that I play video games for money. I have won a couple big name tourneys in CS 1.6 and Source. I have traveled to three different countries to play and I have won with two different teams in multiple regions. Most of my friends have no clue why I just randomly disappear throughout the school year for weeks on end. I'm usually either at a gaming house or playing in a different country. I won a great scholarship for an in-state school, so I am actually getting paid to attend class right now. All the money I get back, averages $600 slash month during session, goes towards my rent and food. I hate it when my parents try to give me money. I don't mention my scholarship to anyone unless the subject comes up and I'm prodded. 
my GF skipped her med school graduation and pictures to help save my best friend's life after he had a triple brain hemorrhage from a skateboarding accident. She worked her ass off for years for that special moment, and gave it up without a second glance, and BC of her my best friend is alive and well. Been broken up for over a year, but she will always be my hero. She never mentions it. I pulled a man from a burning car, he was trapped. I broke the window cut his seat belt and yanked him out. It was all over the news about an unnamed man doing this. I never told anyone. I also rescued my kids from our own house catching on fire while suffering burns, bad smoke inhalation, and separating my shoulder. I don't bring it up. My GF jumped from a second story window after throwing two of our kids to me. She never talks about it either. We lost everything, have had to restart from nothing. It's very rough but we're doing it. I posted the story on Reddit, because I'd like to remain unknown. Because we decided not to talk about it, we received pretty much no donations. Sometimes I go onto our slash suicide watch and talk people out of killing themselves under a different account. I seem to be really good at it, and I'm super proud but no one knows. I'm not exactly sure how it would come up in conversation. Doesn't matter though, I don't do it for the pats on the back. Just trying to throw some positive energy out there to someone who needs it. One of my best friends randomly got an email one day from a movie producer saying that he stumbled upon some of her makeup work and really loved it. She not only got the job but was finally able to get out of the bad relationship she had been in for two years, where she was stuck because she didn't make much money and her self-worth was so low she didn't feel like she could improve her situation. What she didn't know is that I'd been taking pictures of her work and saving them, stealing some from her FB and other social media accounts and put them together to make her a portfolio since I knew there was a good chance she wouldn't think her work was good enough to save. I have a friend from college who works as a consultant for several Hollywood studios and had some nice connections, so I asked him to take a look and see if he could help her out. Sure enough he loved it and started spreading it around a bit until he found a producer that loved it. She's now in California working her dream job, and finally seems to be getting over the terrible depression that had defined the last few years I've known her. To this day I never told her that I did this for her, which was really difficult when she came to me with the news. I don't think I've ever seen her so happy. Ten years ago my high school guidance counselor referred me to the Division of Vocational Rehabilitation because my seizures were so frequent and debilitating that she, among others, did not think I would be able to successfully complete college. I underwent some super intensive medical treatments including being hospitalized for a week to have my seizures monitored during my freshman year of college. I was doing homework while sitting in a hospital with electrodes hooked up to my head. But I powered through it all and that semester I had an honors GPA. I graduated with honors on time four years later, I completed my master's studies one year after that, and I'm gainfully employed in the field that I chose to study. Oh, and I graduated in the recession. I have a job at a crappy well-known superstore. People look down on me because they believe themselves to be better because they have a job they consider to be better. It's automatically assumed that this is the job people go to when they have no ambition. But the point is, I have a job. I support myself completely. I'm 22 and pay every single bill I have by myself without support from my parents or the government. I'm fixing to put myself through college with this job and I am always going to be damn proud of the fact that instead of sitting on my ass I went out and did something. When walking home late through a pub car park I heard a girl shouting from a car, I saw that the girl was arguing with her boyfriend and he was taking her clothes off. I heard her smashing against the window and went over to help, trying not to look like it was purposeful, pretending to just be walking past. Just in case they were just being kinky or something. Saw that she had bruises on her and the other guy was trying to pull her pants off whilst I heard more screaming. I tried to open the door and then they jumped, 
the girl looked at me and I vaguely knew her from college. I ran round the car and smashed the driver's side, where the guy was, window with my elbow, I pulled his head out as much as I could and unlocked the doors from the inside. She got out and ran away, I dragged the fella out and knocked him out, called the police. He was arrested as the girl testified anonymously to it. The girl in question then asked for my number, came round to my house with flowers and a cake as a thank you. Pleading to never tell anyone because she had effectively been seeing a guy who was 22 at the age of 16 and had nearly been raped by him. To this day I have never told anyone and has remained a secret for about 3 years, getting it off my chest to randomers feels pretty good. I am a fucking awesome friend. I will listen to you whenever you need, 3am phone calls full of tears, buy you lunch or dinner if you can't afford it, and really, truly, want to know what is going on in your life. TL, DR I'm good guy Greg, and I could care less if that means I'm going to finish last. Except in bed. I raised my younger brother to be a good man. Our mother is a drunk and drug addict. I was raised mostly by my grandmother but when I was nine, my mom had my brother with a deadbeat guy. I took care of my brother every weekend and holiday and whenever else my mother would go on a bender nothing like being 10 and caring for a baby with colic. This went on for years I would care for him, then go to high school, and pick him up after. Eventually the drug task force kicked down the door of their house to arrest my mom's boyfriend, which terrified my brother, so I decided to take him away. Mom signed over custody and he moved in with my best friend and I. I was barely 20, best friend was 19, and my brother was 11. We struggled, not only financially, but with raising a child that we weren't prepared for. We had no idea what we were doing but we knew right from wrong and we knew love. I worked two jobs, graduated from college, and made sure to be a good mom. My best friend is the greatest man I know, so my brother had a great father figure. We aren't perfect by any means. My brother graduated from high school, works, and has a great girlfriend. He struggled a bit with college decisions and stuff but he is on the right track now. Considering our parents, we should not be doing as well as we are. He is my greatest accomplishment he is a smart man, with a good heart. I love him more than anything. Plus, I have the greatest best friend who sacrificed most of his youth to help me raise a kid that he had no obligation to. I am a lucky girl. I've wanted to work at GameStop since I was 12. I love the people, the atmosphere, and I love the idea of working around something I'm so passionate about. I try not to talk about it often though, because of the awful stigma it has with real gamers. The idea that it cheats people from their money, things are too expensive, the staff is pushy, etc. I try to justify it sometimes, but it seems like the people I know really hate it there, so I try not to talk about how excited I am to finally work there. My first day was yesterday. I didn't leave my husband when he was severely depressed and in denial about it for several years. I didn't know it was depression until he was out of it. It was like being married to a brick wall and even though I was heartbroken that he barely participated in our marriage I stuck with it. But when he finally received treatment, it was like he woke up and our marriage has been incredible since then. Better than I could have hoped. I was tempted so many times to leave, but I am so glad and proud of myself that I never did. My cars. They are what gets me out of bed to go to work every morning. I'm incredibly proud of them but I don't like people who aren't into cars knowing I own them. It's at the point where if I have a first or second date with a girl I don't know very well I'll trade cars for the night with one of my friends who just has some old beater to make sure the girl likes me for me, not what I drive or how much money she thinks I make. I own two properties, have a beautiful and amazing fiancé who is way out of my league, stable well-paying job that I enjoy. Just got back Europe after pulling off an awesome proposal in Venice, good friends, and family, I make everyone around me laugh. 
I feel very much in control of my life. That felt good. When I was put out of my folks house to live on my own, to be fair, I was 26, I didn't think I'd survive. Within a month, I had taught myself to cook, clean, handle my bills and finances reasonably responsibly, do my own laundry, go food shopping and taught myself that I am not as much as an idiot man child as I thought I was. I have celiac disease, must follow a wheat slash gluten, free diet, we found a baker that was repackaging normal products and then reselling them to other celiacs as gluten free breads. He targeted kids and parents of newly diagnosed people with the disease. We did some sleuthing, Scooby Doo esque, paid for independent lab testing and provided him several opportunities to explain the results. He left death threats for myself and family, but we exposed him nonetheless. When we first went public, many celiacs didn't believe us as they thought of him as a trusted provider of foods, eventually they all offered their apologies. It's so stupid because it's just a quirk of genetics, but I'm kinda proud about how tall I am. I'm a woman who stands at about 6 tall and I like wearing heels. Most women in my town seem to be about 5 feet 5 inches, so whenever I'm around a group of other women I feel like a giraffe amongst sheep. It's difficult to find clothes that fit, though. As far as actual accomplishments though, I was able to make a Thanksgiving dinner big enough to feed around 12 people by the time I was 13. My mom had been sick for years, my dad worked two jobs and was never home, and my older siblings were either unable or unwilling to cook. So I learned how to make dinner every day for my family, along with doing everyone's laundry and cleaning up the house. When Thanksgiving rolled around I was able to get everything cooking and a spread set out. Nothing was very difficult, stuffing from out of a box, pre-made biscuits that just needed heating up, stuff like that, but things like the potato and macaroni salads were made from scratch, as was any desserts. I've got friends who burn instant ramen, so I don't talk about being able to cook since I was 12 that often. This marks the end of the video. If you like my content, consider subscribing as it helps me a lot. See you until next time.